What the fuck report? This is Punker Mike. That's Aaron. Hey, bro. What the fuck? Hey, dude. What the fuck? Dude, what the fuck? Sir Roger Moore died, man. Yeah, that's, that sucks. That's dude. like, he's definitely, you know, everyone kind of has their, every generation has their sort of James Bond. For me, it's Roger Moore. My, my first um, James Bond movie was Moonraker. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. 70s, yeah. I think mine was like For Your Eyes Only and, and The Spy Who Loved Me was like right around that time. And I think I, I took your aunt Sean to see. Connery, right? Those no, no, Connery. no, that was Roger Moore. I, oh, think, okay. I think I took your aunt to see um, The Spy Who Loved Me. So that would say that was early 80s. But yeah, anyway, so we're going to dedicate this show to him. So, all right, enough with that. <laughs> And all our ska <laughs> bands always love James Bond too, like Selector and James that's, and uh, that's Specials. All part, and, that's all part of it, right? Uh, and I think it's what is it? Is it Scott Lights? I might be wrong on that. I can't remember. One of the original '60s first wave ska bands did the James Bond theme, and um, so yeah, he was kind of part of our culture. Yeah. You know? So, anyways, so what the fuck happened this week, man? So, well, since we're in England, right? and yeah, we're talking about that. Let's start off with uh-huh. uh, with Manchester tonight. Oh, heavy, Holy heavy shit in Manchester. Ariana Grande. And I, I, at this point, like I, um, well, for first of all, I have no idea who that pop singer is because I'm oh. old and and they're not bad religion. So I, I actually do know who the pop singer is. She, oh, you uh, do. My daughter has got, actually gone to see her. She oh. was in. Um, she was on one of those little Disney shows. I want to say Victorious with Victoria, somebody or other, some little singing, dancing girl. And she had a little. Uh, she had like a a, an, uh, a supporting role in this. Okay. In but, this little I mean, kitty I, I sitcom. I know the show you're talking about because my daughter watched it too. Victoria something. You're right. Exactly. She was a little yeah, girl. She was a little girl with red hair, bro. The little crazy girl with red hair. Well, she she's all grown up now. And uh, and and she's this little skinny thing, and she's you know twenty two, twenty three years old, just a little girl, and um, yeah, it's, it's it's very poppy, and it's you know totally sure, not sure. any it's kind of that, music that, that, that we or you would listen to at all. But, well, right, but it's but I do happen to band. know who she was. It's that and, crop of like out of the whole of like Jonas Brothers and and, and like after I Miley Cyrus, even, all yeah. of those kind of well, people. Well, you she you yeah. she grew up in the Disney system, so uh, you right, know that's yeah, what I mean. definitely that's what I mean. Miley Cyrus and and. Uh, who's that? Uh, who's uh, uh, I Carly? What's that little girl's name? Um, I forget. That was I, the you know one. who I'm talking that about. That was the one I could tolerate watching with my kids. They actually, right. they actually, like acting was pretty funny, and her little blonde friend who was always in trouble and doing right. horrible things was pretty cool. And her brother in the show was was a comic, and he was pretty funny. Okay, so let's stop talking about um, little, little <laughs> Disney show. Well, so anyways, yes. So <laughs> there was this horrible this horrible bombing at an Ariana Grande concert in Manchester, England, last night. Apparently, some suicide bomber decided to blow himself up and took 20 little girls with him. Uh, I think one of them was eight years old. But it was basically teens, preteens, and their parents that were at this show. So it just shows the cowardice and the and the. Well, but we don't know what the intent. Now, I that's guess, true, like, bro. That's, the next that's so day, true. The next day, um, I guess this morning, like an ISIS cell has taken responsibility. Like, of course they have. And maybe they are responsible, but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean they have. And you got a very right. good point. Everybody's saying, "Oh well, these guys are ISIS." But we don't know that. We don't know we anything. Don't know we don't know. Do, I mean, there hasn't been hardly any that I have. I haven't heard of anybody getting into this guy and saying, "Oh yes, this guy was on the watch list. He was on the no fly list." Right. You know, I haven't right. heard right. any right. of that. Which they, he may very well be, bro. Which he may very well be. But and, we don't know that and, yet. And either what, what, either way, it is. If it's just some kind of dude who had a death wish and wanted to take some people out with him because he hated life or whatever that's important to know because then that's how you go forward in healing the people who have been affected by it so that you can address it honestly and openly but if it is some radical fucking terrorist dude then you need to address the victims of it from that perspective and have and, and just go at it honestly for what it is 
you know, it's like you're not going to fix it for anybody. They're going to be like people are devastated by this. It's it's uh, and and we are as a society. We, I'm not the first to say this. Many people have said it, but we are becoming like, um, you know, desensitized to these types of things. And it's hard to feel real, real empathy. I'm sure if you're in England and if you're in, you know, there it hits more to home. And, you know, but. We just, I, you know what, dude? What it's just me. so senseless. It doesn't matter. Either way, the bottom line is it's horrible. It's just so fucking wrong, and it doesn't achieve what any of the people, for whatever reason they might have done it, it's not going to achieve what they wanted, and it just... Yeah. Yeah, no, I get you, dude. I mean, we have to find I mean, out. One of the things I wanted, I, I, what really irritates me is how the media is selling the fear now. You know, right. there's. You know, I saw on the local news there's a concert at the Forum uh, tonight or tomorrow night, and they're bumping up security on that, and all the countries are raising their security. Now everybody's running around fucking af- afraid. So when they see a backpack sitting on a on a bus bench somewhere, they're gonna think it's a bomb, and we're gonna have a bunch of people running around calling in these because everybody's so afraid, selling fear. I could not believe how much they were selling fear. I fucking hate it. You know what? That's how they win. You want to let the, You want to let the terrorists win? Live in fear, assholes. Yep. Go out, and if you want to beat them, go out and gather with your fellow um, humans. Go out and do things. Go out and experience life with them, and don't be afraid. Are we doing go that the, this, week, uh, this weekend? Go to, go to a concert. I'm going to one, dude, for three freaking days, and I just found out that Joe will be off. It's going to be there, which is pretty freaking vicious. Oh, my goodness. So he's doing a midnight party at some venue, uh, the Tiki Club or something like that. So We're uh, going to go hang out, and hopefully we'll get um, suicide bombed. Yeah. <laughs> so moving on from Manchester, I mean, I don't know if you want to talk about anything else, dude. It's a horrible tragedy. I hate them selling fear. I'm not, I'm going to keep right. living my life. I'm going I to think de- that's it. I think I just want to read faces. Right. Yes, we're not right. going to say the well, guy's name because we're not going to give him any credit. Yeah, fuck exactly. Yeah. So just the, the way you combat it is, and, and and overcome the whatever sense of uh, travesty you feel over it is to go out and don't be, live in fear. Go out and enjoy life. Go out and suck the fucking marrow and shit. <laughs> so did you happen to catch Bill Maher this weekend? And see uh, you the- know what's strange is I did because I don't watch that fucking bougie fucking sellout scumbag Ooh. piece of shit that often. But. <laughs> Ooh, strong words. I, um, <laughs> I, I did give up on him after like, you know, he's the one that kind of turned me on to Bernie Sanders. Sure. And then after Bernie lost, he totally jumped on the Hillary bandwagon, and I'm like, "Oh, I'm out, bro. I'm out." Right. right. So right. he had uh, he had. Well, Dr. let me clarify real quick before we get into. Um, uh, uh, I, I just want to say this about Mar is like, I'm not going to sweat someone for listening to him. I mean, I will listen to him. He has on his show regularly stuff that's relevant and timely, and I just think his perspective and his narrative on those issues is so often like just arrogant. And fucking so full of himself. I agree with arrogance. He he doesn't have much of a connection with like real people anymore. He just has his show uh, and what he thinks. And I just I'm so fed up with that fucking dude. But like, yes, him well, having I, yeah. his conversation with Cornell West is relevant. And I think um, Cornell did a great job of destroying Mar. And Mar just like basically he what Mar was doing, bro, is he was selling um, the idea that. You know, we have to fucking start accepting that Hillary would have been good because she would have been better on things than Trump. And Cornell brought up uh, some very significant things and, and specific things that she is not better than Trump on, like Wall Street. And he brought up, you know, like um, Libya and you know her foreign policy and the people who die. And like the imperialist streak in Hillary is not worse or better than Trump. It's. You know, if anything, I think maybe not as blatant. No, I think we would probably be in more military shit because Trump is so stupid. He doesn't fucking he doesn't think militarily like decisively when it comes militarily. It's knee jerk reaction stuff. He thinks for ratings will make him look good. Like Hillary will go out with methodical purpose and bomb the fuck out of some bulls. Yeah, but she'll do shit like like that and not and and but and do it and make it look good like Obama. Right, she'll put a Greenpeace sticker on it. And no, we'll she'll do it on drones good, or some shit, you know? Yeah. Um, well, the, the point being is she'll just, you know, she'll dress it up with your regular liberal fucking human rights fucking lie 
and well, going, I'm to just saying, people, it's... going to bomb people for fucking corporate greed and, and oppression. So Cornell was arguing that on those things that she's not better than Trump. Yes, they, they're, her, her rhetoric would be different, but her actions would still be the same. And some of us would argue maybe worse than Trump. And I ain't even going to defend Trump. I mean, our show is pretty much the we fucking hate Donald Trump show, right? So don't don't, don't think I'm trying to defend Trump or say he's good somehow because – Well, and no, and what things, Cornel there, West there, said – and there are things that she would be better on than Trump, without question. So uh, go ahead, Michael. Well, yeah, but I mean, and what Cornell West said is that uh, he, she'd be a disaster, and he'd be a catastrophe. Right. And and, and he's and he's, abs- he's and absolutely absolutely right. Blew that and Mark totally blew that off. And he's like, that's the same thing. And it's like, no, it's not. There's no, a difference. It's he said different. a catastrophe is worse than disaster. No, yeah. right. And so Mar wanted him, kept trying to get him to say that Hillary is better than Trump. And right. I, I will, I will give you that. Yes, is Hillary better than Trump? Sure, Hillary's better than Trump. She's not a stupid fuck. Okay, right. but that, but that doesn't. That whole, hang on, ahead, that doesn't necessarily mean that she won't do the same stupid things that he's doing. She'll just dress him up real nice and pretty, just like Obama did. And the reason right. I wanted to bring this up today is because I heard it on the Stephanie Miller show, and one of the little girls that's on that show um, apparently knows Doctor West. And, okay. and, you know, and they were talking about, you know, and, and said, hey, you know, he, you know, I know he's getting older and he's got some good points, but he's kind of losing it and he's kind of missing the point, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? He was right on it. And they were right. going, you know, you got to get over this Bernie bros thing. And I got to get over the Bernie bros thing. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not getting over no fucking Bernie bros thing. Why? Right. Because I believe what what Bernie Sanders happens to stand for is better right. for our country than right. say the the uh, uh, establishment democratic ag- agenda of Hillary Clinton. I'm sorry. How about let's put it this way: the neoliberal agenda of Hillary Clinton, right? Okay, or the fascist agenda of of Donald Trump. Which sure, is not that much different because her the- neoliberal agenda is an oligarchical form of fascism it's still fascism it just doesn't have a dictator at the head it has a it has an ol- oligarch and i the think the only difference Which is trump still has trump still has that oligarch you know whatever deep state military industrial complex whatever the fuck you want to call it but it would be the same under both of them neither one i've i have said for years bro and and, and i know i cut you off and i'll let you get back to what you're saying but i've said for years man that like um it, and you've agreed and, and i'm not the first to say it that it doesn't matter who the fuck the president is but the, it does. The agenda rolls on. But the problem, the it does. It does, make it, it does make a difference in some cases. That's right. There's in the broader picture. And here's the thing I think that Cornell was getting at, bro. And this is what I agree with is that oh, um, we're I, done. I we're done with this lesser of two evils bullshit. We've been done with the lesser of two evils. Yes, Hillary is better than Donald Trump, but she's still fucking evil. And she's still fucked off. And just because she's a three clicks better than fucking Donald Trump doesn't make her acceptable. And and I think people like Mar and maybe this person that was on the Stephanie Miller show, I I think, bro, this is some psychoanalyzation, and it's not very fair because, for one, I'm not a fucking psychoanalyst, okay? And two, I don't know them. But I think that we're, really what that's coming from is that somewhere deep down these people are fucking know that them going for Hillary – and actually dicking over Bernie and stuff that they just basically in the overall scheme of things, those fucking people had it wrong throughout the primary and throughout the election. And they're scrambling to find ways to say, you know what, Be- because them getting it wrong is a fucking real strong argument for um, being a large contributor to why Trump became president. And a lot of super far left progressives have been saying it for a while. That one of the reasons Trump became president, one of the biggest reasons, is because of the way the DNC handled the primaries with Bernie, and then because they put up Hillary, who was an uh, unacceptable candidate to most think to most uh, progressives. So people like Bill Maher and other people who want to justify their support of her, knowing when it really fucking gets down to the grit of it, that there's truth to it. That the way that they fucked over Bernie and supported Hillary was a large contributor to handing the office to Trump, and they're trying to fucking, like, cover their guilt. Okay, so that's a lot of tinfoil, and it's a long explanation, too, but I think that's where that's coming from. It's, it's they're going through the stages of grief or denial or whatever it is, bro. He's bargaining. 
He was. <coughs> Bill Maher was uh, uh, you know what? No, it's he's fucking establishment, and so is Stephanie Miller. And the bottom line is, they want to continue establishment. What right. they're coming from, where they're coming from, is from health care. Okay, we would still have Obamacare today. I mean, I guess we still kind of do, but I'm saying we would not have this attack on our health care system if Hillary Clinton was president today, would I'll we? Give you that. Okay, so one you said three clicks there's one that's the only one i can see so in that respect she is definitely better than what we have now well, but i'm still with, not backing off hang on i'm still not backing off i'm still okay. not backing off wanting something better for my country and for my children for sure i want i want universal health care right. where's that oh well hillary clinton was the most progressive candidate we ever ran yeah because you didn't fucking run bernie sanders so right. no f you i'm not getting off the bernie bro train okay right. i want the same shit he's on my train right. we're not bernie bros bernie's on right. my train guys right. he's on the he's on the punker mike train bro. he that's wants sure. what punker mike wants is what's that's going right. on exactly that's right, that's right man. so and that's we what just irritates the shit out of me get woke by Bernie Sanders, dude. No. Okay. One of the things this little girl said no. that I wanted to bring up from the Stephanie Miller show is she said, you know, well, Corno West said that he was going to be the biggest Obama critic, you know, and blah, blah, blah. Ta- Good. Hell yeah. You attack him on his shit, goddammit. You call him out when he's dropping bombs on brown people with drones. Yep. You absolutely yep. do Cornell that. And That's Cornell what did, I absolutely dude. expect. Carnell was if he's, very fucking critical of Obama for that if, stuff. If he never gave him a pass. No, absolutely not. And if he's doing establishment bullshit, I, I absolutely think that he should be called out on it. And same with, with Clinton, which is what we thought we would be doing this year. Right. But no, we have Cheetolini that we have to fucking... Right. Okay. Anyway, right, so right, right. that's so the deal. Speaking of Chino Lini. Okay, look. So, yes. so you, you, I, I would suggest actually people watch that interview. Go on YouTube. It's on there. And watch this um, exchange between yeah. Cornell and Bill Maher because what it really gets down to, what that argument and the why it is t- talked about so much in the news is, is it goes right to the root of what the, the progressives and the establishment, the, the, the dialogue going on exactly. between progressives exactly. and the establishment part. Party. It really just qu- it's the qu- it, uh, it, um, exemplifies it so nicely. So I suggest you watch. I don't know that anything was. I think Cornell presented a better argument. I think I people w- will tend to disagree. There was going to be people who disagree, but so Definitely. check it out. It's worth watching. Definitely. And like you said, so you brought up. You know, we have to deal with Cheetolini. You know, so oh, um, and 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 look, here's something that that would not have to have been taken into consideration for Hillary. And and I and I actually I did want to back up a little bit and say that there's other things like all the. Um, the Muslim ban stuff would not have happened with Hillary, and um, LGBT point, com- community point. would not be terrified like they are right now under Trump. Women and like, wouldn't be terrified they're going to get health care removed right, from there. Right. Women would not have a president who bragged about grabbing pussy right now. So, I mean, it's like— Or a vice yeah. president that w- made women have to bury their uh, right. uh, yeah, unborn baby fetuses. But one of the reasons that someone like – this is an argument from a lot of anarchists and socialists, okay, is that um, the, the, the danger of someone like Hillary who, who, who is better on these things and on these fronts is it sort of pacifies a lot of people Ooh, and, good point, and, then good point. Al- and then ultimately allows that person once pacified to excuse – their imperialist warmonger agenda, which people fucking – the liberals did Shut not out. They just sucked fucking Obama's dick every time he dropped the fucking drone strike. Oh, yeah. People, the liberals were not giving him a hard time, you know. So, like, but now if Trump le- levels one fucking Tomahawk missile, the left is going to freak out as they should. But if it was Hillary, they wouldn't say shit. And guess what, man? No, but the right would. Uh, and and I got to tell you this, I, I, and and I, I, and I I want to try and be as sensitive about this as I can because in no way do I want to belittle like the plight of any. Um, disenfranchised or minority group in the United States. But the fear that we go through in America is nothing. None of us, none of us in America go through is comparable to what children and people are going through in Yemen and in Syria and on the oh. ground in these places, man. Okay. And so Sudan, uh, I think I just heard of is going to be in. Right, man. And yeah. Hillary would have been that devastating to you. So, but okay. So one of the things that, uh, that Hillary would not have um, sort of inspired was what NATO and other agencies are doing, bro. Like um, they, they, NATO has determined that when Trump shows up, they're going to keep their speeches to two to four minutes in order to appease him and so that it can get through his like 
I don't know, his propensity for one page of graphs and, and charts, right? Like, and, and you were saying, I guess, Mike, that yeah, they've done a stuff lot of <laughs> Yeah, I've heard that. And it, it wasn't from, like, our State Department. <clears throat> excuse me, of course not. Or from, you know, our side or our government or anything. But it's these other people from other countries have come up with this list of ways to deal with him now that he's on this foreign trip. And that's one of those. That's one of the things. Keep your keep your speeches to two to four minutes because he's a child and has the ex- attention span of a flea. So you have to keep it. You know, and and he doesn't read, so you have to use. You know, they have to keep things at bullet points and 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 keep him moving. Otherwise, he'll fucking fall asleep on him and shit. I occupy him. You know what I mean? Well, as I said, I, where where do you even fucking start with that? Well, dude? and then I check mean, out. it just speaks for itself about how incredibly fucking stupid he is and what a laughing stock he has made. You know, America. It's well, you know. And here's the, it's just it's the, all the same criticisms that the right had of Obama that were unfounded and totally inaccurate and wrong criticisms are totally right are and so accurate now, now accurate Blatant. now about Bush or about Trump and we can't level them against them because we sound like we're just parodying the same shit that they said eight years well, ago they, and, that, and they say oh it's political it's just political because you lost the election you lost the election you probably right. should have won the right. fuck. Right. That 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 makes the fact that the um, the, the international community um, needs to speak in like short sentences to the dude running our country because he's so fucking stupid. Yeah, that's my you know, I need to get over it because of voting. It doesn't change the fact that he's a fuck. It, it's so insane. And and the things that go on that are allowed to happen under this moron and, you know, like. Yeah, well, hopefully it'll be ending soon. He meets with Erdogan. He meets with fucking Erdogan. (sighs) Oh, my God. You're going there. Erdogan leaves that fucking meeting after getting, you know, his his knob fucking polished by Trump and goes back. His dictator uh, knob. Right. And goes back to the embassy. And there's, you know, 12, 15 uh, anti uh, Erdogan protesters. I I think they were from another. They're from another party, I think, and they had certain flags that were well, definitely opposed they're, they're of supporting, Erdogan. Def- yeah, they're supporting the PPK and the YPG, That's which it. we can get okay. into all that stuff. And like the YPG are fucking uh, essentially anarcho syndicalists. They're they're a lot like um, the Zapatistas and stuff, and they're really interesting. What's going on there? And um, there's a lot of women heroes that are fighting and taking up arms and being trained, which is just insane there because you know. Women don't know how to drive and shit, right, bro? I mean, like, they're just for making no, babies and shutting no, no. up. They don't and know these how women, to drive. And these women are out there fucking fighting for, for freedom. And, of course, Erdogan hates them, okay? And so, like, that. anyway, so, um, you know, just the, the – and I know I'm sure people saw what was going on and, and what happened was, you know, um, a bunch of fucking Erdogan's guards bum-rushed these fucking – American citizens, protesters on American soil, and beat them and Dude, it was kicked horrible. them in the fucking head numerous times when they were down. It was so graphic and so gnarly. And yeah, I don't give a fuck what your political beliefs are: it. Republican, leftist, anarchist. I don't give a shit if you're, you know, libertarian or Green Party, whatever, man. Those were American citizens, that was and just wrong. and the. The muscle of a dictator from another country came to America and beat the piss out of American citizens on American soil. What the fuck, dude? But you know, why should we Isn't fucking that, care? Like, because we got we got people like war. fucking. We, I, you know, it should be it should be considered an international incident. Incident, and I think in normal circumstances, it would be seen as provocation of war. And not that I would ever, ever, under any circumstances, like get behind us going to war over dude. this. They but it speaks d- to the it speaks to the, the the larger point though that like um, why are we just allowing this to happen? It, it, okay, look, you know why? Dude, they had because diplomatic immunity. Allow- well, look, dude, they have diplomatic immunity. But you know what else? We're allowing fucking people like you know Proud Boys to roam our streets and beat the shit out of people and and harass and fucking terrorize people. Dude, they showed up at fucking Revolution Books this last week. Proud Boys showed up to Revolution Books where they were showing a film of Sun Sars Taylor's speech at berkeley like two weeks ago and tried to harass everybody and and freaking tear and um vandalize and fuck the place up instigating fights they're trying to right. instigate they're right. trying to instigate it um a confrontation 
So for our listeners who haven't you heard me talk about them before, the Proud Boys are a group of people started by Gavin fucking McGinnis. He he fucking he makes them take an oath of a be of um, pro misogyny, and they have to say that they refuse to uh, uh, apologize for creating Western civilization, and, and then they have to promise Gavin McGinnis that they won't fucking masturbate, and then they get jumped nice. in while rattling. The names of cereals and shit. Okay, so these are the types of fucking street thug, scumbag, fascist, Nazi pieces of shit that are roaming our streets as American citizens. So why should Trump give a fuck if his buddy fucking Erdogan will come here and his goons run and fucking attack people on the street? And you know why? Because he I mean, doesn't. Because they have precedents, though. It's not just Trump that did it, dude. Dude, I, dude, Erdogan's fucking people did this. Uh, his same guards beat the shit out of fucking protesters in 2011 in America, in New York, or beat the shit out of journalists in 2011. And, um, you know, just actually, I just want to backtrack a little bit. They hospitalized 11 people. Yes, 11 people. Yes. 11 yes. people were hospitalized by these fucking goons that at the embassy. That dude choked her out, and none of them yeah. get brought up on charges because of diplomatic immunity. Right. It's fucking right. wrong, and it's bullshit. So two incidences last year, dude, in 2016, there was one in uh, incident in April where they beat the shit out of journalists, Erdogan's fucking thugs. And then there was uh, uh, they were uh, there's video. You can see it online of them like going up to protesters on the streets in fucking D.C., dude, and ripping their signs out of their hands and pushing them, intimidating them. dude. These are fucking uh, goons from another country intimidating American citizens. I don't give a fuck if you disagree with what they were protesting. Those are American citizens, and these are good. So that's that's 2016. Okay, so um, okay, so in 2016, um, while his freaking um, his goons were assaulting American servicemen, secret servicemen on U.S. soil, Erdogan is inside the building, um, uh, trying to participate in Muhammad Ali's funeral, and being shut down by his family and. Every step of the way, dude, being humiliated because he's trying to be attach himself to the legacy of Muhammad Ali. Meanwhile, his goons are outside assaulting American secret servicemen. So this is just a yeah, long pattern. But, and there's, and, well, and there's Turkey's all kinds one of, of our biggest there, allies in the Middle East. There's all kinds of incidents of them doing it in other countries, too. It's not just America. Oh, oh yeah, for sure. They just cruise all over the country and beat Wherever the shit were, out of yeah. it. And it, because they do it in their own country. They beat the fuck out of anybody that opposes right. them in their own country, so they think they have the right to do it. And if they have diplomatic immunity and they're not going to get brought up on charges, then they can do it. And if you think that Erdogan didn't, didn't fucking order that attack outside the embassy the other day, I got news for you. You need to look at some more video because there, uh, there's more video uh, on YouTube that you can find it that shows clearly – Okay, everyone's probably seen the video of Erdogan standing by his limo, kind of looking on as they're fighting, as they're attacking these protesters, right? Right, right. Uh-huh. Well, there's, that's like the second part of one video, and it's been released now. And then in the first half of that video, Erdogan's sitting inside the back of the limousine that he's standing to in the video people have seen. So he's sitting inside the back of the limousine, and one of his security guards leans in to talk to him. And obviously Erdogan tells him something. He says, okay, okay. And he kind of leans up and he gets the attention of another security guard who is a, or not security guard, but, you know, goon, um, who is essentially standing between the guard talking to um, Erdogan and where the rest of the guards are uh, across the street from the, um, uh, the protesters. So this, this guard is kind of midway between. So the guard talking to Erdogan signals to the guard at the midway point. You can clearly see that guard acknowledge that he's been told and given an order. He turns around, and he darts off, and like 30 seconds later, you see the bum rush of all the fucking Erdogan's guards just totally attack all the uh, protesters. So it's just clear as day when you watch the video. There's no getting around it. There's no uh, conjecture or whatever. Erdogan ordered that to happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I with even, without even watching the video, bro, I, you just totally got that impression. It's like, right. of course and, he ordered that. And you look at the look on just his face. By the way, he was like, watching. Yeah, exactly. Right. He's like, okay, they did what I said, and I, I can go back to my room now. You know, my, my, my orders are done. You know, it's just the thing was, I, I don't think anybody is all that surprised that Erdogan would have ordered it. It's just that it hadn't surfaced, and it hadn't been officially kind of made clear, and I hadn't seen any of the main media outlets really make it clear. And they probably won't, dude. The mainstream media, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if they just keep it quiet that there's literal video proof that Erdogan um, ordered it because it that 
He said an international incident. That's a provocation for war. I, I, I understand. <clears throat> I haven't seen anything else about it on Democracy Now. I know Amy showed that video over and over. Uh, that and that's when I was like, "Wow, holy crap! I didn't see that." Right. So I don't okay. know. We'll have to see. I she just talked about she just talked more about it today. So. And well, and so I guess uh, just we can file. Uh, you know, the, the so speaking of you know Donald Trump hanging out with authoritarian fucking scumbags, he was in um, Saudi Arabia. Holy <clears> and, crap! Holy crap! Did you did you see? You want to unpack that one? I'll let you. I'll let you. A <laughs> <laughs> hundred and ten billion dollar arms deal with Saudi Arabia, and we sold them some. Some well, let me smart guidance. Hang on, sold him it's, some smart it, guidance weapon that to, Obama well, wouldn't sell him. This. It's a, let me just say this. It gets to three hundred and fifty billion over the long term. So it, actually, the deal's for three hundred and fifty billion, but it right. starts out with one hundred billion. I believe. Well, and it was all. Anyway, it, I just want to clarify that. Oh, you could have done that. And now. it is the largest arms deal in American yes. history. So. Yeah. And it was negotiated now, what were you gonna by. Say about the other, it was negotiated by Jared Kushner. So there's that, and and then what he, um, and then there was other stuff that went down while he was there, like, um, you know, okay, oh, well, then oh, Ivanka, our, wait a minute, we've got we've got this uh, this week okay. in nepotism. Yeah, let's hear about this week in nepotism. Ivanka, yeah. as soon as they sign the hundred ten billion dollar arms deal, oh, that's going to be three hundred fifty billion over the long term. Uh, Ivanka, they just, they decided to give Ivanka a hundred million dollars to her her charity to help women become entrepreneurs. Isn't that awesome? Gee, that's, that's funny. So great. Didn't I hear him bitch and complain about Hillary Clinton's Clinton Foundation and how he, she was right. accepting money from foreign people and she should give all that money back? Specifically Saudis, dude. Fucking he, he went off, asshole. dude. He went off about the Saudis during the campaign. And wait a minute, They're didn't aren't the Saudis? Thank you. And, 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 she, and she needs to give money back to the Saudis because they're responsible for 9-11. And so guess what? All of these fucking alt-right fucking douches, that's one of the things that they jumped on supporting him for because they believe that the vast Jewish conspiracy of globalists headed by Rothschilds and Soros um, and the Saudis is who uh, you know Donald Trump was going to fight, right? You guys voted for him because he was way against the Saudis and the, you know, Bilderberg and all that, right? Oh, and Wall Street and, and Goldman Sachs. And Wall Street, right, right, except, you know, he just um, – he Half just agreed to the sex. largest arms deal in American history for the Saudis. Jobs, so, bro. Jobs. So, you know, Jobs, whatever. Bro. You guys just like him because he's a fucking racist. And that's all it is to it. Yeah, you know? So they can drop – so brown people can drop more bombs on more brown people. Right. Oh, yeah. And so And we're going to make money on the deal. And yeah. a lot of people are going to die over it. They're going to use yeah. those they're, – they're already using our weapons in Yemen. And now they're starting to no, use them in the Sudan. I mean, I mean, it's essentially we just we just cinched the deal for genocide. And uh, Ivanka and Trump got a hundred million dollars out of the deal. Yeah, that's fucking And how come awesome. this isn't? How come this what isn't nepotism? I mean, dude, isn't this an emol? Doesn't this break the emoluments clause? Isn't this like impeachable? Yes. Isn't well, it, okay. isn't okay, so. isn't hiring? Isn't getting rid of Comey? Um, isn't that the obstruction of justice? Isn't that impeachable? Didn't yeah, Comey so write a, special, a fucking yeah. memo that came out and said, "Yeah, we have a special um, special prosecutor now. He's the old ex, uh, old FBI dude. He's yeah. a uh, yeah old FBI director. I can't think of his name. Mueller. Here, I'll break it down real quick for you. Okay? Mueller. So, uh, so Mueller. special prosecutor. Uh, so it was uh, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. Okay, he's the acting right Rosenstein. He's the dude that's under Sessions. Uh, He's in charge. He's the acting attorney general in charge of the Russian investigation because Sessions had, quote unquote, recused himself, even though he's still commenting and participating in it. But so Ro Ro Rosenstein fuck. is the dude in charge of the Russian investigation. Yes. So it's Rosenstein who appointed um, Robert Mueller. Right. I think I called him Rosenstein last week, F but yeah. Right. So it's Robert Mueller. And so he's the um, former FBI director who preceded Comey, who was he was appointed by Bush. OK, right, so he, right. he's a he's a he's a, a freaking Republican appointed head of the FBI who is now, now 
being um, assigned as a special prosecutor to investigate at what is being called in numerous circles, left and the right, a criminal investigation. Uh, make no mistake, there is a criminal investigation headed by the FBI now and the special prosecutor, Robert Mueller. And, so, and then he, he, he gave up secrets to the Russians. Yes. And then and then what did he say in, in, in fucking Israel? Okay, here, so here's what it is. now. Um, so in that now infamous meeting with the Russians, which we talked a lot about on the last week's show, if you want to know all about that, go back to that. Uh, last week's What the Fuck report. And, uh, but in that meeting with the Russians, he um, apparently told them um, – you're just kind of bragging like a four-year-old uh, – secret intelligence that he had been made privy to. Now – um, what that intelligence is, I'm not sure, but for, we can get back to that in a second. But um, right, right. what um, he apparently the, the the information that he shared with the Russians was information that um, may or may not have come from the information originally may or may not have come from Israel. But apparently Trump didn't say That's that. The, he just gave, he didn't reveal the belief. source. Right. He didn't. He didn't reveal the source of the information. He just said the information, whatever right. that information right. is. And, and Pence now, even said he probably didn't know the source of it. Right. Right. Which is probably true. No okay. doubt. <laughs> and and don't keep you know don't lose sight of the fact that the president does, does have the right to declassify anything he fucking wants to anytime he wants to. I, I understand um, that too. Usually, usually presidents do go through a specific process and they actually like look into what declassifying this, what ramifications that might have. They don't just, just blurt shit out to Russian ambassadors in the fucking Oval Office. But anyway, um, so after he leaves Saudi Arabia and gives, you know, Ivanka her hundred million dollar deal that's going to, you know, cause genocide in Yemen, he goes to Israel and um, he meets with um, that uh, fucking scumbag Netanyahu, and uh, who's also just a far right authoritarian, murdering war criminal piece of shit. And um, so they have their meeting, and oh, okay. um, and they have their meeting, and then it's pretty much done, and they're just kind of doing their photo op, and the photo op is even just sort of wrapping up, and they're, and, and uh, Netanyahu's about to fucking walk off, and Trump goes, hold on, hold on. Everyone's like, what, what, what? And he like, no, no, really, hold on. And he shuts everybody up, and he goes, like, just for the record, <laughs> I never said Israel. And it's like, but now you did. But now you just did, okay? And um, <laughs> no one asked you. No one asked you if you said Israel or not, dude. Why are you saying this now? And now that the fact that you did, you've almost sort of <laughs> – Implicated Israel. Now, now that gets back right. to well, and then that gets back to yeah, gets, the, what it's. We don't know what was the information that he originally shared with the uh, Russians because that lends credence to why it's relevant that he got the information from the Israel. So I don't know what he said, right? What it, that information was that he gave them and why it makes saying Israel relevant or not. But apparently, it was a huge fucking mistake. Yeah, <laughs> and and apparently, it did have something to do with the fact that. 20 little girls got killed last night in Manchester, England. There's something about that intel or something oh, no about kidding. giving up that intel. Yeah, apparently that was the, the, the tinfoil from the, from the tweets that were going out today from a couple uh... of different Republicans. Okay, that because of that intel and because of him giving that up, it looks like, you know, it could have led to the fact that 20 little girls died in but let's Manchester. just clarify that straight up tinfoil. And even straight, the up, where... straight up speculative, speculative right, spotting right. tinfoil. And yeah. even, even the source that you're getting that from says it's – no tinfoil. one's trying to – yeah, everyone's being clear that, hey, the, could it be this, could it be that. So I don't know. So I, I'm sure by next week's what the fuck. But we don't – right. But I mean are. we still have somebody who's given up you know, state secrets to the Russians right? right after having a little chit-chat with Kissinger. Everybody forgets that. <laughs> I know, I know, because people just don't understand the relevance. Of oh Jesus! Okay, so uh, moving they, on. They just think he's some dinosaur statesman. But, you know, Let's he's just not. move he's on. Relevant. He's a melting dinosaur statesman. Let's move on from Cittolini and his band of circus midgets. Uh, what do we move on to? Circus I, monkeys. I don't know what else is left. Is I there more just, to talk about? There was a no. couple of things I think that. Okay. Is there? 
that we were going to talk about. Wasn't there more? We've, we've, well, what, what, what about this week in net neutrality? Oh, that's right. Well, so do I, I don't I even mean, know where to start with it. It's just it, right. It, this guy is fun. totally going to destroy it. This guy is totally. Yeah. What's his name? Uh, Alt Pi or G Pi Joe? Yeah. <laughs> Agit Pi. Agit. Yeah. I I have to uh, listen. Uh, to, I, after Amy Goodman can, pronounces it two or three times in the show, I got it, but I could right, I haven't heard right, it in a few right, days, right. but. So he's all about, and so what Net Neutrality does is it ultimately um, ends. It it can it, the the long term, the the broader effect that it has is that it just ends freaking free speech on the internet. On the surface, the way the mechanism by which it does is it, is it gives private companies the ability to well, they always talk about slow down or speed up your service. No, no, they can, but they can it literally just block stuff. They can just Google sure. can just you know you can put in punks for progress search word and Google can go nah I, I don't want you to have results for that. Right. Because... So sure you can post your shit online, but none of the search engines and things like that because private companies and and make no mistake it's the same media companies that. <clears throat> Own the five major media outlets in the world are the ones that are gonna, you know, they're positioning themselves to take over the internet and censor it. So it's all a uniform one state media run thing, whether it's just the internet or cable TV Jeez, or whatever. That sounds That's like what communist it's... China, bro. A communist Korea, North Korea, don't they control the internet? Does the government control the internet? Yeah, well, in a number of countries that happens, and they, no, no, they I, censor the internet, and that's what what it does is it, it doesn't give the government the power to do that. It gives private companies the power to do that, which is even more scary, and um, and and actually a truer uh, um, definition of fascism too is what that is. Um, Yikes! But, I mean, you know, so you know, and I don't know, and you know, here's the thing: that you know, they're going to impeach this fucking dude, and but oh, all this I stuff hope, that man. he's doing. All this stuff that he's done is still going to be in place. It's not going away. Don't give a shit, bro. And Pence is coming in, and he's going to be, I think, far more worse. I said, and I posted it the other day. I said, I um, Trump will be recorded by history as a footnote to the atrocities of the Pence regime, and I, I stand by it. Because and, he'll do all the right wing shit, all nice and pretty, just like Hillary would have done it with, you know, for the, for right. the lefties, all nice and pretty. And You're no still more, gonna have the same fashion. And no regime. more fucking just crazy be... bullshit that all of his fucking you know his administration and, and his, his his talking heads and stuff that are gonna have to reel from like all this shit that they have to backtrack and and recover from all the crazy nonsense that Trump does all that will disappear. Pence will be quiet, and methodical, and just go about his business of fucking devastating the freedoms and lives of millions of people. It's so scary, dude. Getting rid of Trump is not a good thing. It's good. Good because fuck him, okay. But it's going to get worse. I, I think Trump is, uh, Pence is going to be worse than Trump. So you know. worse. Uh, mm, interesting. I think it's far worse, like incalculably worse. Get ready. For, I, I think get ready for the FEMA camps and shit. That's my tempo. So my 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 um. Going out on uh, what I have to tell Eddie Money is, bro, <laughs> you might want to cash in your two tickets to paradise because you, 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 we might have two tickets to a FEMA camp, bro. So just say it. Mike, well, actually, don't cash in your two tickets to paradise. Go to paradise now and get it in while you can, Eddie, because uh, we, we might be sharing a um, rail car to FEMA. Great. Okay, Eddie. <laughs> All I got to say is who needs love to have any fun? Who needs love when you got a gun? <sighs> Me. <laughs> 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 All right. That's not that's my answer to that. But so. I don't know how you're going to answer it, Eddie, but there you go. Buddy. <laughs> so, you know, what the fuck, dude? It's just another dude, crazy. Dude, what the fuck? Yeah. But check it out. So I, I don't know what we're going to do and how we're going to go about doing this, but we're going to uh, Punk Rock Bowling for three days. I imagine you and I will be posting videos throughout the weekend. The what the fuck report may not happen. It may happen. Who knows? Well, that's why we had to do one tonight. But whatever it comes down to, 
we'll maybe we'll just do a what the fuck. We just have a yeah. mass. We're gonna have a mass of stuff after the end of this weekend, and you know, um, or, you know, at the end of next weekend, and so I, well, I'm sure we'll get a full show out of it at least. Um, but we're gonna get well, and I think lots what of live I'm gonna... footage, hopefully, and hopefully we'll get some good interviews and stuff. So I'm just, I'm just telling the listeners. Uh, I have no idea how it's going to come together, but we're going to put we're we're probably going to bombard you with so a mass stay tuned of for more rock yeah. and roll. Um, I yeah. actually attended a a really cool little punk rock show this weekend, uh, Friday night yes, in did. Chino. Yes, you did. Yeah, and yeah. got a really good little interview with um, with Hexed. Hey, dude, you know what? Check it out. I, I'm going to give you some shit because the first video <laughs> you put up of Hexed, it, you know, it wasn't bad. It was a cool little tune. But then you like for you must have been sitting on it because you know the day before that show that you were just talking about, yes. you posted a second video from them that was really good. It had like way better song structure and more dynamics to it. I was like, wow, they're fucking like no offense, hex guys, if you're listening, but that first song I heard, it just kind of sounded like typical first band high school punk rock band stuff. Yeah. But then yeah. that second track was like it had good like like I said, it was dynamic and it had a little more variety in it. I was impressed. And then, and then you posted video of them inside the venue. Now, let me also uh, share the caveat that those first two videos that Mike posted, they're, they're filmed outside and live bands just never sound good outside. It just always sounds bad outside period. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, Every band it's that, hates it's that it. hard yeah. punk rock garage sound. <laughs> right, right, right. But the video that you got at the show that you were that you went to and got the interview at dude they're fucking they they added a second guitar player and and dude their songs are really cool i really really enjoyed it it was so much better yeah. than i than my initial impression of them and i just i was really impressed and uh, so anyway i'll, I'll let you uh, we'll probably well i was gonna say <clears throat> we've already got some stuff that probably should pop up there some video from james chance um we've got still video from uh what god what was that thanksgiving Damn. karaoke Oh, yeah, you have the damn. We've been right. We've been talking about all this here: English beat footage, Descendants. Um, so we I've, might. I've got transgender chicken dance, chicken poo dancing. We should probably pop up dancing. a, a midweek show here, maybe. Well, you know, sometime. Yeah. So. Sometime. Stay so tuned for we're, that. We're going to actually probably overload ourselves with. Uh, we're going to get backed up here because we are going to get so much stuff from Punk Rock Bowling. But we'll get it all together and we'll put it all together and make cool shows out of it for you guys to have uh, entertaining, fun stuff to watch. Put our videos up on so you guys can check it out at uh, YouTube. Yeah. Punk's for yep. Progress on the YouTube. That's right. Punk's the number four progress on the Twitter. That's right. And like and share stuff on our Facebook page, please. Nobody shares our shit on Facebook. I know. I know. No shares. They're, they're selfish with their sharing. No but shares. that's okay. That's okay. Fine. Did your mom ever teach you to share? They have sharing yeah. day. Every Monday was sharing day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got something to share with you. <laughs> fuck off. <How's> that? <laughs> you fuck off. All right, bro. I love you. Hey, I love you too. That was a good show. So yeah, uh, it was. We'll. I'll see you this weekend, dude. You will. We'll see you guys later. Peace yeah. out.